Hello, hello, hello. This is Kenny Perkins, a.k.a. The Cancer Guy. And once again, we come to you with another phenomenal guest. You know, this time we take you to the island of Greece. And if you've never been to Kavala, this is a small, <laughs> small town in Greece, um, small but beautiful, enriched with so much culture. And our next guest is from there. We have bringing us talking about uh, different uh, types of cancers that she's gone through her journey with her cancer. And we'll, we'll let her describe that. We're bringing to the stage today, Regina Makadu. Regina, welcome to All Talk Oncology. Hello. Good evening from Greece. <laughs> oh, like I tell you, All Talk Oncology, we're reaching everywhere. We're, we're global. That's great. That's amazing. <laughs> so Regina, talk to us a little bit here. You know, here at All Talk Oncology, talk to us a little bit how you ended up, you know, with, with cancer. Like, how did that journey, how did that come about? Well, I have no idea, but <laughs> suddenly, <laughs> suddenly last summer, uh, I, I, start, I started, you know, feeling tired. And this was really weird for me. I'm a fitness trainer and uh, my fitness levels were really high. And suddenly I couldn't walk like five meters. I was exhausted. And um, well, I went and I had some uh, exams. I ended up in the hospital uh, having transfusions, blood transfusions. And uh, I had uh, acute myeloid uh, leukemia. So I spent five months in the hospital having really, really strong chemotherapies. My doctors didn't know at first um, if I'm going to need a transplant or if the chemotherapies are going to be enough because um, when I ended up in the hospital, my... Um, my situation was, was really, really uh, serious. I just didn't know it because my body was really strong. So I didn't understand it uh, fast. But when you say serious, what, is, what do you mean by that? Um, I don't know if we have the same um, measures uh, about blood tests in uh, Greece and uh, uh, in the States. But when I got into the hospital, the doctors said that I should be almost dead already. Mm. Um, and I was up like I just had uh, I just had training like four hours before I ended up in the hospital. Um, I had four blood transfusions in one day and my uh, my exams, my blood tests were showing that I don't even accept the new blood. So uh, cancer cells, they had already taken over my- um, Like your tissue? Yes, 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 yes. My blood tissue, yeah. Oh my goodness. So it was, it was pretty, pretty serious when I got in, into the hospital. Now what's going through your mind at this point? I mean, you're going here, you just four hours, four hours ago, you were out there, you were working out. And, and now, you know, you're coming in just, to, I'm not feeling good, not knowing you just, I, you know, I need to get this checked out. What's going through your mind now, all of a sudden, the seriousness starts to hit you. They're telling you, we need transfusions that we need to do this and, you know, service you this way. What's going through your head? At first, they didn't know that it was leukemia. Um, because they had to do way more exams to understand what was going on. But at first, I didn't want to believe that it was something serious. I'm always, uh, first of all, I was afraid, <laughs> like everybody, I guess. I was in the hospital. Nobody likes to be in the hospital. But um, from one, on one hand, I was afraid. On the other hand, I didn't want to accept that I'm going to be sick. I was such a strong person, so I couldn't see myself in a hospital bed. So I was just waiting for a, 
uh, for the doctors to say what was going on, I was, you know, I was lost. The first hours I was just lost. I, I couldn't really, I, I couldn't realize what was going on. But then when we got the, the results and um, they told me that it was leukemia, that I'm gonna need uh, chemotherapies, maybe a transplant. Uh, again, uh, this, is, this is where it hit me. And uh, for the first hours, days, I could say, I was crying like a baby. <laughs> I was like, oh God. You know, sure. but but this left really fast. I think that this left uh, this feeling uh, ended really fast. I had really good friends around me, and um, sometimes I I thank God for an American girl. Uh, she she was diagnosed fifty seven days before me. And uh, she was the first who started dancing her, leuke uh, her leukemia. Um, I think she inspired a lot of people around the globe. Now we're all dancing our, uh, our cancer away, thanks to her. Uh, it's uh, Tia Stokes, she's from uh, USA, an amazing person. So my friends find her, they show her to me and from that day i was dancing every single day in the hospital oh my goodness how awesome is that inspired huh she she became my inspiration and i think that people met her in greece through me and we all saw that if you think positive if you smile if you believe everything is possible. I went through really hard chemotherapies and I had, I didn't even realize what was going on. Everything was, was so smooth in the hospital, but every morning I was waking up, I was doing a little, a, a small workout every single day. And then <laughs> I was dancing, then I was eating my breakfast, you know, every day I had a, a routine, but I wouldn't let um, cancer and therapies and uh, being in the hospital during summer. And you know, summer is so amazing in Greece and everybody was out at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in a hospital room. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I was trying to have fun on my own, but it helped me so much. Where did that come from? Where did you get that type of I need to get up and dance right now. I, I just, I need to get up and exercise a little bit. Where, where did you get that from? I wanted to leave. <laughs> you know, um, when doctors come to you and they tell you, yeah, that for the next six months, you're going to be in this room. You're going to have three to five days off every month, but then you will come back here because uh, leukemia treatments here in Greece are um, 20 to 25 days in wow. the hospital. Wow. And uh, because of COVID, um, nobody's allowed to see you. So you're all alone in a room, in a small hospital room. And um, when they came and they told me that I had leukemia, you know, uh, you're facing death. It's not easy. Uh, not just leukemia, any type of cancer. When they tell you that you have cancer, the first thing that you're thinking is death. We shouldn't think of that. No. <laughs> like uh, cancer nowadays, uh, it's treatable. And um, you have to believe it. You have to believe it. And I wanted to leave. I love my life so much. So I said that I won't let cancer or hospital tell me how I'm going to leave my six months, yeah. I decided that I'm going to do it my way. Now, Regina, did you say you wanted to li live or did you want to, you wanted to leave? Both. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I love it. 
<laughs> you know? And so you stuck through it. You stuck through it. You know, you wanted to live. So you, you put up that fight. Is that what you're telling me? Is that what you're telling the listeners here? You wanted to live. So you just, you were going to fight. Yes. I decided that I'm, that I'm going to fight my way. I saw my doctors as my coaches. I've been an athlete my whole life. So this was my, my best, my biggest, my hardest race. The doctors were my coaches. I was their athlete. I was listening to them. I was following their instructions. I was, but it was on me. They did everything they could, but it was on me. This is how I, I saw it. It was like, as an athlete, you know, when you're ready to go, it's all on you. Yeah. Your coach is just watching you. It's all on you. So you have to finish the race. That's how I saw it. And that's how I fought it. Yes. What a great mindset, right? You know, and, and I think that's a gem, you know, Regina, in order to get the right mental mindset, you have to find something that you could connect it with. And you did that with, with fitness. You said, Hey, this is my, this is my race. And I have my coaches such so powerful. Yeah. yeah. I think that my fitness history, my athlete history helped me a lot on that. My mind was already, you know, um, not organized, but maybe coached since I was a little kid to end my races. Mm. You're not allowed to quit. <laughs> you have to fight. So that helped me a lot, yes. a lot. Now that must have been difficult too, Regina. So here you are, you're in the hospital, kind of isolated from support. How did you find ways to fill your soul up that way being isolated within the hospital i was trying to occupy my mind so as i told you i had a small a small workout every morning i couldn't do a lot because i was feeling so tired but i was getting up um uh, i was doing a little walk on the spot some stretching I didn't want to, you know, leave the hospital and be, uh, feel like a mess. You know, I was doing some stretching. Then I was dancing every single day. I was reading a lot. Um, I was, uh, I was painting, uh, you know, oh, wow. no, you know, it's a, it's this little, little albums where you have to fill the gaps, <laughs> but it was keeping <laughs> It was keeping my mind, you know, busy. Yeah. So the hours were passing by. I watched a lot of shows and series and, you know, 24 hours are <laughs> too many hours when you're in a hospital room. Yeah. So I had to keep my mind busy. That's what I was trying to do. I, actually, what I said to myself, like 10 to 15 days after my first day in the hospital, what I told to myself was, okay, now you have the opportunity to educate yourself. You have so much time in here that is gonna be wasted if you just sit on your bed and watch TV. Mm -hmm. So that's why I started reading. Um, oh, uh, I learned... Uh, <laughs> I started um, Italian. <laughs> <laughs> so different I learned languages. something new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I said that I, had, I had a lot of free time. Yes. Don't let it get wasted. You know, time, time is precious. So I was trying to keep my mind busy. I love that. I love that. You know, and I, I think I think there's a gem for the listeners to know as well. You finding different things that you can occupy your space and keep your mind off of what's going on, right? Because we have to live our life also without being in fear. Would you agree with that? Totally. Totally. And that's what I'm trying to do since I, uh, I left the hospital. 
I'm trying to show people that nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. I know that there are many forms of cancer uh, that need surgery, that they're in a very, you know, high stages and they're untreatable, some of them, but even I thought that I was in the last stage. This is what I thought. And um, even people who are in the last stage of cancer, don't let it tell you how you're going to live even the last months of your life. It's up to you. Yeah. This is why I started dancing. I was like, I'm not going to die in a bed. I'm gonna, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die dancing. Like <laughs> it's, it's my life. <laughs> These are my last months. And actually my good psychology helped so much that for the moment, and let's hope, let's pray. I don't even need a transplant. Oh, yeah. I'm beautiful. Even, even my doctors couldn't believe it. Of course I have five years ahead, but um, even my doctor told me, I really believe that you're done. Wow. And that's what I'm trying to tell people. Yeah. Believe. Think positive. Smile. Even up at your worst fears. You know, when you see Boogeyman, smile at him. <laughs> <laughs> because of what, Regina? What does that do? Are you smiling even if you see the boogeyman? You see, I mean, here this cancer is a boogeyman. How do you, how do you, what does that do for you? What is Boogeyman's job? To scare you, right? If you smile at him, you're not scared. So he might leave. He can't do anything to you anymore. He's not Boogeyman no more. That's why I smiled at my cancer. Wow. Powerful. Yeah. So powerful. You know, so here you are. You're not taking, you're not taking any of this. Boogeyman is coming, cancer is coming your way. Yeah, okay. Okay, we're going to dance this. We're going to exercise in place. How did you get this social interaction? And how did the people who, um, how did you attract people to your team, right? Because even when we have cancer, people always come and show up. How did that happen for you? Well, I think uh, it's time to say that in the States too. So <laughs> I think that cancer, what, what, a good thing that cancer does is that um, shows to us uh, who really loves us and who doesn't, who was in our lives just to get stuff from us and who is really our friend. I lost a lot of people during my cancer journey and um, I also won a lot of friends, but as a conclusion, I would say that uh, those who left do me a favor, mm. for real. Like they, they should never be here, there in my life. And maybe they were part of my sickness. So I'm talking about toxic people. We all have toxic people in our lives. And um, this is uh, my, this is the gift that cancer gave me. All the toxic people left. And suddenly I was so clean and happy. You know, sometimes we say, oh my God, why are you leaving me now that I'm sick and I'm going through so many situations and I need you, my friend, my boyfriend, my maybe relatives too. They're leaving because they, they had to leave. And cancer is doing you this favor. Mm -hmm. they, they were never there for you. So um, right now I have very, very, very powerful people around me. I don't let toxic people around me anymore. Not even for five minutes, you're out. Um, I'm really trying to communicate 
all this through social media. And uh, it's amazing because through social media, my story uh, traveled all the way to LA. And um, I'm really thankful for that because as I was helped from another girl in the United States, maybe my story will help other people to start live their lives with a positive way with a better way of thinking and without toxic situations in our lives. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and let me tell you, Regina, that happens so commonly. You know, that's one of the common things that happens as, as people go through cancer, it really shows you not only what's going on with you inside. Would you, would you say that? I mean, we, we, learn, we learn a lot about ourselves right? As you go through, you go through cancer, but we also teaches us who really are there for us, right? As you, as you mentioned. And so what a gift too, would you say that? I mean, could that be, could that be a thing? Is that not a gift? I think that, you know, we were taught that uh, every disease, you know, disease, bad word, cancer, bad word, hospital, bad word, you know, and we, we, every time we uh, connect these, these words with death, 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 you know, all of us, even me, uh, we're thinking about, you know, uh, these, uh, these hospital, uh, cancer hospitals, we say, okay, this is where death lives. Well, let me tell you something, my friends. None of us is going in there to die. We're going in there to leave. So stop calling cancer hospital the death rooms and start calling them the life rooms. If we wanted to die, we would stay home. Yeah. We're going in there to leave. Even if we change this word, maybe the mind of some people will change and we'll start thinking about that in a positive way. So, you know, cancer, it's not a gift, of course, because it hurts you. <laughs> even, even the smallest therapy, even the smallest cancer, in some point will hurt you, but you will learn something for sure. Yes. You just have to find this something. Open your mind and you will find something new that you never thought before. That's my lesson. Absolutely. And absolutely. No, cancer is not the gift. The gift is people showing you who they really are so that yeah. you know where to put them at in their life. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So here you are. You get through this, you, you, you're working your program, you're in a race, you got your coaches, you're listening to your coaches, you're looking at the boogeyman, right? You're letting them know, I'm not afraid, I'm smiling at you. What do you also implement? How does, has nutrition played a part in your life uh, now that this, this has happened? How do you go about living your life uh, now? Um, even in the hospital, because uh, unfortunately here in Greece, um, we're lucky because our health system, uh, we're not paying anything, everything is for free. Uh, so if you have cancer, because I know that in the States it's extremely, extremely expensive, um, but uh, the hospital food is not eatable. <laughs> so i had um i made uh you know i talked to my doctors yeah and i asked them it was forbidden at first because of covid but uh i asked them to let my mom cook for me every single day my mom was living uh in um right across the hospital they had the guest rooms for our parents and my mom was living there and she was cooking for me every single day so i tried to have the best nutrition possible uh of course 
every, anything that was allowed because I was not allowed to eat some foods because of my therapy and my meds, my medication. Um, but I was trying to eat the best food possible. And I think that my nutrition helped me so much fight this monster. Uh, and uh, when I got out, I, I was always eating healthy, but, you know, I really, I really, really believe that nutrition, fitness, and my athlete, athletic mindset helped me a lot during all the situations. So for someone who, you know, because cancer catches a lot of people off guard, right? The majority, right? No one, no one goes, oh yeah, I have cancer, right? You go to the doctor and then you, you receive this news based upon a test or whatnot. How do you structure your dieting at that point? Because prior to, I, I, what happens prior to being diagnosed, a lot of people eat what they want. And a lot of us are, a lot of the foods that we do eat cause inflammation. Um, and it's not, it doesn't help with the treatments in a sense, right? I mean, you're a lot of, your body's inflamed, as they say. So how do you, at this point, eat according to your condition? Um, well, I think that uh, doctors, I don't know if it's the same because I saw other people in the States eat totally different foods, but my doctors, they were not allow me to eat anything raw. During my... Uh, during, as long as I was in the hospital and I was taking the medication, I was not allowed to eat anything raw. Everything had to be cooked. Even my veggies, everything had to be cooked. Um, I tried to add a lot of veggies and protein, um, good protein in my, in my food, uh, in my diet. I'm very lucky because in North Greece, where I come from, we're still very, very lucky and everything is fresh. Mm. Uh, you know, wh uh, where I live, it's a small town where we have really fresh and good, as I, I say, vegetables. It's not from the, you know, the supermarket or something. So I was trying to eat as clean as possible. And... Um, of course, I was ne never, you know, uh, stress out myself. Like if I wanted to eat pizza, I was eating a pizza. Like I was telling my mom, mom, uh, today I want to eat a pizza. Yeah. It was okay. You're going to eat it. But it's not, a, it was not an everyday thing. Now I think that nutrition is, uh, you know, is a problem anyway nowadays. Because even in the States, it's the same in the States and it's the same here in Greece. A burger costs a burger with french fries and a diet or a coke costs one dollar 150 i think and if you want to take a lettuce it's almost four dollars a lettuce you wow. will never get full with a lettuce because <laughs> <laughs> you need meat and you need your you need pasta you need rice you need something else too so a healthy meal costs a lot so people nowadays find this a solution and they eat everything that they find around. And I think that this affects a lot our health in general, not just for cancer. There are so many other diseases out there, mm -hmm. diseases, but I think that nutrition nowadays really affects our health. Yes, absolutely. So as you embarked on this cancer journey, you know, a lot of times the things that we value show up. What is it that you remember? What is, what is one of the precious moments you have in your head about that you always, you can go back to and, and think about? Do you have one of those moments? that you just a great memory? I think it was uh, on the first days. It was uh, on the first days uh, in the hospital when I realized what I can do. It's, it's amazing. I will never forget the day when I said, okay, now you get up. 
you get up, you can do this. And when I saw that I can do this, when I realized my power, um, how powerful I can be, who I am, it was the best day of my life. Uh, it was maybe I had my, uh, my birthday in the hospital. Maybe it was two days after my birthday. And uh, I said a lot of times that I was reborn. Mm -hmm. It was not just the birthday. I was reborn. I realized who I was and what was happening around me. Yes. And who are you? <laughs> I'm me. <laughs> You know, we're afraid to show who we are. Mm -hmm. And I dare everybody to be themselves. Be silly. Be happy. Be who you are. Cry when you want to cry. Smile when you want to smile. Don't, don't care about judgments and society. And we pretend a lot. And we lose our precious selves. Mm. I'm me. I'm me. Yeah. I love that. You found, you found your authentic self. Huh? Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. I love that. You know, it's, uh, it's a privilege to have you here on our, on our show today, you know. And it, this, helps, this helps, I hope, people to see no matter where you are in the world. Cancer does not discriminate, right? No. And it affects so many of us. And this platform, All Talk Oncology, is to, is to bring that together. If you get diagnosed and you don't know what to do and it's overwhelming, the information you find and, you know, how, many of, how, how much did you know about uh, your disease prior to being diagnosed? Is that something that you had in your head? Uh, n no, <laughs> no, right. I, I, I knew a lot of things because, um, I read a lot <laughs> right. and, uh, I knew about leukemia mm -hmm. and, um, it's not easy, you know, it's, uh, it's hard, but, um, we all do that. I start Google everything. Exactly. But but then, uh, but then after the first week, I stopped Google and <laughs> I start, uh, I start asking my doctors. So I was, um, I told them, okay, I will stop using the internet. If you will let me have two questions every day, I made this deal with them. So I was like, I'm going to have my two questions every day, but I want my answers. I had amazing doctors. Yeah. They are amazing. I love my doctors and my nurses. Um, so every day I had two questions and every day they were spending even five more minutes than they had to answer my questions. Oh. So I think that it was way more helpful than Google uh, <laughs> to have my doctors answering everything to me. And uh, I learned a lot of things that I didn't know about uh, leukemia. And I think that when somebody is diagnosed and uh, we, we hear, you know, the, the bad news, it's not easy for us, but it's not easy for our families either. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you have cancer, all the people around you fight with you. So maybe it's harder for us because we're, uh, we're leading the race, but all the people around us have to be as strong as we are, support, and they have to understand that we might be aggravated, we might cry, we might smile, we might change feelings every five seconds. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard for us. It's hard, it's hard for our families. It's hard. Every disease is hard. And as you said, cancer doesn't, doesn't care about race, 
age, about anything. Kids have cancer all around. The cancer is all around the globe. But I think that we're getting stronger. And I think that we're really close to beat him. This is what I think. Yeah. We're getting really strong. And it's platforms like this, I hope that can help empower other cancer patients, right? And yeah. I, I, my, I, my point in that too was, you know, of course, you're a reader and you knew a little bit about leukemia, but not to the extent that you know now, right? And so, no. I, right? And, and that's the case with, with, with the majority, you know, no one really looks up a, a specific disease because you don't necessarily know you're going to have that. But once you do get diagnosed with that, that becomes a focal point. And so I hope all talk oncology, when you get diagnosed with something uh, as horrific as cancer, and I hope, I hope no one does, but uh, again, um, in the year 2020, there was 19.3 million people that were newly diagnosed worldwide, right? Mm -hmm. So when you get diagnosed, I hope All Talk Oncology can be that platform that you can go to and find your specific cancer and then listen to the real person and talk about what they've gone through and how they got through it. So that, that's our hope. That's one of the things that we hope to, to accomplish here at uh, All Talk Oncology. And so Again, here's a question I have for Regina. How does Regina celebrate, right? You know, we think of celebration, oh, it's, okay, it's a party, it's, it, it's, you know, champagne. But along this journey that you've gone through, how do you find ways to celebrate the victories, some of the small victories along the way? Well... I was dancing <laughs> <laughs> every day. <laughs> but, um, you know, every time that um, they were doing the, the exams, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know the word in English, you know, where when they uh, take the bone marrow, the bone marrow exam. Mm -hmm. It's not, a, it's not a very good feeling, but every time that my bone marrow exam was coming out clean, oh my God, this hospital was <laughs> uh, a nightclub in the room. <laughs> I swear. I love my it. nurses was like, were like, other patients are sleeping. I was like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes yes you know and i'm I, greek i'm absolutely. greek i love to celebrate <laughs> come on it's important it's important you know and i and that's what i say to everyone find little ways to celebrate along the way these are little victories and these little victories are big victories at the end you know because it takes the little steps right in order to accomplish a goal you have to you have to take steps and these steps get you to your final destination. So I love it. I love it. This is what my doctor uh, used to tell me because I was uh, the hospital that I was in uh, was uh, the university's hospital. So my doctor was um, a PhD professor. And um, every time he was coming in my room uh, with the students, of course, I had my questions. And I was always ahead in my therapy. So one day he's coming in, I think I was in my second therapy and he's coming in with the students and he was like, Regina, listen to me. <laughs> we have to do baby steps. Today, try not to vomit. It's gonna be a victory. Mm. Tomorrow, try to be able to have clean veins so we can take your blood tests. Mm. Uh, small victories. This is what my doctor used to tell me all the time. And step by step, we ended up having the best result possible. Oh, love that. Love that. You know, Regina, because it's so important. You got to celebrate along the way. Yeah. And look at you just smiling, 
you know, <laughs> your spirit is good. I love that, you know, and I'm so glad you were able to join us here on All Talk Oncology. I'm honored. I'm honored to be here with you. Thank you. Regina, what, before we let you go, what is something that you can tell our listeners who may be going through leukemia? It's hard. I know it's hard. Uh, there are going to be times that you will be ready to quit and lay on your bed and just let it take, o- let it take over you. Life is so beautiful. Life is so beautiful. Just don't let it win. Every single one of us is so strong. We have so much power in us. Every single one of us. There is no person on this earth who is not strong. But you have to find it. Find your strength. Find your positive energy. Smile in every fear that you're going to 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 have in the hospital or or during this cancer journey. Try to smile, cry when you need to cry, but smile every time after. What I say every time after every big storm, there is an amazing sun come out. Mm-hmm. you know have you ever seen a storm like stay there forever no it's a storm it will go and the sun and the rainbow will come back again so think about that there is always the sun the sun will always come back this is what i say love that keep on keeping on yeah. don't ever give up ever yeah regina you are you are a brave soul, and we're so happy to have you on our, on our show today. And I hope you guys picked up on some of these gems. AllTalkOncology.com. Always you can go to that website. You can find out all of the different people who we've hosted, um, who have been guests on our shows, gems that they've dropped that can help you on your cancer journey. You're not alone in this. We're in this together. Regina. Regina Mekedu from uh, Kavala. Kavala yes. Greece. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's been our pleasure. Thank you. So again, we want to give a special thanks to Regina McKedu for joining us here on All Talk Oncology. Now, I hope you picked up on some of the amazing gems that uh, Regina gave, because this will help you uh, along your journey. One of the things she talked about was finding something that you can relate to. Now, for her, it was fitness, right? She was an athlete. And so she said she looked at the physicians as uh, coaches. And she was the athlete that needed to execute the plays. And so the the doctors would give her uh, what she needed to do. And those were as her coach. And then she would go out and execute. And losing was not an option right? Not allowed to quit is one of the things she talked about. You can't quit on this. And it's all up to you to finish the race. So I thought that was an amazing uh, analogy. And so if there's something that you have that can, uh, you can compare to as you go through cancer, find something similar that you can use uh, that will help you uh, along your cancer journey. Another gem that Regina talked about was about uh, being able to occupy your mind. Now for her, uh, she was isolated because of COVID. Um, No one could come in and visit her, no friends or family. So she had to find ways to occupy her mind. And what did she say she, she was able to do? She said she went on walks throughout the hospital. She stretched, you know, found ways to still get her fitness in. Uh, She danced. That was something that she, she loved to do. She learned to paint. Um, she even learned a new language. And so if you find yourself isolated uh, or alone, you know, are there things that you can do that can help benefit you along the way? So another thing that she talked about that I really enjoyed too, was that cancer really shows who you are. When you, once you get diagnosed, 
who you are on the inside. Cancer reveals that. But not only that for you, she said for her, it helped her to see who was there for her along the way. And she realized that she had toxic people in her life and that she, she had these people there um, before cancer, but she realized these people were not servicing her in a good way. And so she eliminated them from her life um, because it no longer served her. But did she also gain new friends? And if you talked, if you heard her talk about her friend in the hospital, how she was able to help her to fight and how they're still friends today. And so these are some of the things that we picked up uh, as gems. She had so many, and I hope that you can go back and pick up uh, what you need along your cancer journey. Again, I just want to thank everyone for joining us here on All Talk Oncology. Here's where you will find up-to-date discussions with industry experts and leading professionals that can help you on your cancer journey. You're not alone in this. We're in this together. I'm your host, Kenny Perkins, a.k.a. The Cancer Guy. Until again, I'm out.